there listening to this radio show. Why don't you sit there, pay attention, shut up, and turn up the volume. This is Ruthless Ryan Davidson from the Reality of Wrestling. And you are listening to Houston Wrestling Radio. Hey everyone, this is Kayla Hendricks from Boston Strong Bombshell, and you are listening to Houston Wrestling Radio. Hello and welcome everyone to the 51st edition of Houston Wrestling Radio. This is Abel. This is Travis. This is Chris. And thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. We got uh, quite a bit of stuff to talk about. We actually are going to be talking about uh, Ring of Honor a little bit, as well as WWE and TNA. Ooh, Ring of Honor. Yeah, must have done something bad. <laughs> well, not us. More, more, more to them. One of them. Remember uh, a couple of weeks ago when, uh, well, I guess it was more than a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about uh, um, the tournament, uh, when they started up that World Te- Championship C. Tournament, and we said that we were going to order a pay-per-view, we were going to actually watch it, and all this and that, C. remember that? Well, as it turns out, had the opportunity, I think all of us did, I, I know I did, Chris, you did, Trav, you, you did too, right? Uh tr- Tried to watch the, uh, the pay-per-view, C. C. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um yeah, we all we all uh tried doing that there. And well, I was kind of excited for it. Well, first off, cuz you know, it was free. So I was mm-hmm. like, "Hey, yeah, free. Cool. Gratis. Gratis. See." Sí. And uh, you know, sí. <laughs> stop. <laughs> and uh, you know, it was a while since, you know, we've seen anything from ROH and uh, you know, basically since uh this is a show in San Antonio, you know, and you know, I sat down, watch it. Everything was going smoothly. It was a pretty darn good show. The first uh, few, the first few matches, um, especially you know the the semifinals of the tournament. There, they were all really freaking awesome matches. And uh, Travis, I think I remember you texting me saying that uh, isn't it a shame that we won't be able to have any of these as match of the week or something along those lines. See. <laughs> I didn't catch the first half. I was on, on the way home. I was. I noticed that you guys were watching it, so I had to drop what I was doing, which was just like underwear shopping. And I went back home. Underwear to, shopping? I don't know. I forgot what I was doing. It was a long weekend, <laughs> and I, I I missed it. I I load. I you had to sign up for an account, right? Through Go Fight Live, which I had never done because I never saw that site to begin with. Did the account as soon as I figured it out. Intermission. Mm-hmm. So I didn't see the I didn't see the I was just reading tweet but I was just reading Facebook updates of the matches that were going on so far and it sounded like it was good stuff and I was really looking forward to the second half. Mm-hmm. Did you guys have Did you have stream issues the first half? No, no, the stream was perfect all the way up until uh, that last match there right before intermission. How far did you get, or when did you start? Hour and a half. You started at the beginning too, right? No. I, I started like 45 minutes into it or an hour into it. That's right. That's right. And you didn't... Right when Adam Cole uh, won that that figure four with the kick to the head. Yeah, that was sick. That was yeah. so sick. Yeah. yeah, he had him... Literally, that's when I turned on... That's when the stream came in. He was like kicking dude in the, in the face when he had him in figure four. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I didn't catch that. Yeah. Um, oh, I mean, see. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, you know, that... That right there, I mean, just bringing up that that move and the way Adam Cole won that that match itself is sick. It was ridiculous. It was so freaking good. Everything on that that show up until the point where that intermission happened was so freaking good, and it all fell apart basically because of you know the, the stream issues. And I think that's really really sad because of um, the missed opportunity that 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 ROH had. Basically, ROH stopped doing the stream, stopped doing stuff with Go, Go Fight Live because they've had so many issues uh, in the past. And they're like, well, you know what? We've had this tournament that we've been building for you know the last month or whatever. We're going to have the finals of the tournament. And we're going to go ahead and just put it on the, the streaming iPay-Per-View again. And we're going to do it for free. So this was a great opportunity for ROH to really show what they got and kind of gain back some of their uh, fan base that they have lost uh, because of all these stream issues. And then it just all completely fell apart. And yeah, that second half, um, I, I was looking forward to seeing Ricky Marvin against Roderick Strong. And then a minute and a half into the chop fest, 
choppy choppy went to stream you know <laughs> and i i've got no i'm i don't watch stream stuff so i didn't know what was going on mm -hmm. i just saw that you could switch from flash to hla which i thought was hot lesbian action i know somebody's gonna prove me wrong i don't know what it stands for <laughs> i kept switching back and forth and then one stream worked for a little bit and then it cut and then it froze and then it stopped so i switched back to the flash and it worked for a little bit and then it just stopped and then one just completely didn't work at all which was the hot lesbian action one so i switched back to flash <laughs> and it worked a little bit but it was just it was hard to watch. Like it, it, it was like watching a DVD on your DVD player, and it was scratched, and yeah. it just skipped and froze and skipped and froze to the point where you don't want to see what's coming up next because the whole point to get there is going to frustrate you. Ah, uh, yeah, and it was frustrating. Like I was going to try to be a trooper and watch all the way through the end, even with the the um, choppy choppy, as you said, um, and. It actually cleared up right before the main event. And that was like, okay, good. At least the freaking main event, we're actually going to see them crown a new champion and everything's going to, you know, be great. And then, like, I don't know what, two minutes to the match? Did you get that far? Did you guys get that far? No, my ADD kicked in whenever it stopped on the Ricky Marvin match. I said, I checked out. I just stopped watching it. Okay. Yeah. I actually. My reverse ADD kicked in, and I went to the bitter fucking end, and I saw how it finished. Even though I saw like maybe frames of stuff here and there because of because of the stream issues, the finish felt like it came out of nowhere, kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so I I I can't give an honest opinion because I don't really watch that much Ring of Honor. But Adam Cole and his opponent in the main event, it looked like it just didn't look right. Like the dude was too built. You mean Elgin? Elgin, yeah. yeah. The the visual just didn't look like it went together real well. Okay. And the way that the action that I got to see between the two just... I don't want to say it felt forced. It just didn't feel... Natural? Natural, kind of. Yeah. Maybe that's just me because I need to get, watch more Ring of Honor stuff. I mean, we, when we went to see him in San Antonio, we saw Cole and we're like, you know, this guy could actually do some damage here in yeah. Ring of Honor. Like, he, he left... To me, he left a, a real good impression on me, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Supposedly he well after the match he went heel right yeah and then um, I heard oh, he did yeah I heard over in a PGW um, PWG Pro Wrestling Gorilla yeah that one okay I thought it was PGW thought, wait, wait, wait. Um, that one he's like he's a heel over there and supposedly he's like awesome over there I, yeah. I haven't seen any of this stuff um, Jay Briscoe came out after Cole won um, to hand him the title and uh, it was all dramatic and slow but he gave it to him shook his hand raised his hand all that. And then as soon as he turned around, Adam Cole super kicked him in the back of the head. Ooh. And then as soon as uh, he got up, he um, – as soon as he – then Adam Cole got the belt. And I, I, don't, I don't remember if he hit Jay Briscoe with it or if he hit um, Elgin with it. But that's how he – and that's how the show ended. Okay. You know, uh, aside from all the, the issues with the feed – one of the things that I wanted to actually talk about the content, and that's kind of what we're doing right now. We're kind of yeah. talking about the content, even though I didn't get to see any of that because uh, I gave up halfway through the main event because at that <laughs> point, that, that was my breaking point. Um, but this is what I wanted to say after I found out that it was uh, Cole that won the title. I felt as though, my, and, and of course, this is my very limited, limited Ring of Honor knowledge. Uh, I felt as though both Michael Elgin and Adam Cole seem kind of stock to me you know they, they, they both seem a little bit creative wrestler to me i mean generic yeah generic i mean cole just has black tights and that's it elgin's a big buff dude who has a bat a black uh uh slinglet and that's it and, and they, a mullet. Uh, yeah oh okay a mullet that adds a little bit of pizzazz but i mean <laughs> you know it's still a mullet it's like uh, wrong decade you know, but a little pizzazz a little bit <laughs> the mullet on who uh, M Michael Elgin. Elgin. Yeah. Mullet doesn't count because he's got a ball spot the size of Arizona on the top of his head. <laughs> That's true. So he's no. making it for it. <laughs> yeah. I was really, really, really rooting for uh, Champa, the the guy that that yes. lost to. Um, to Cole at the beginning. That's who I really wanted to see. You know, win and go through. But that's just me because. You know, I'm just trying to gravitate towards the characters. I mean, the dude had a mohawk. He was the Sicilian psychopath and this and that. And the little bit that I have seen of ROH, not just 
that night, but a little but bit before. you've got history watching him on HDNet and, yeah. and a couple of shows. Yeah, so, so I, I mean, I feel like he has a more fleshed out character, and that's one thing that ROH is known for, for having fleshed out characters. They'll go with the best wrestler. And yeah, Adam Cole might be the best wrestler, and Michael Elgin might be the best wrestler, but neither one of them are big over the top characters. It's the problem. It's, it's to ROH's credit, when they get it right, they get it right to the point that they lose them. Mm-hmm. Brian mm-hmm. Danielson, CM Punk, Samoa Joe to a lesser extent to TNA. Stuff like that. When they when they build them right, they build them so good that they belong in a bigger platform and that's where they end up going. Yeah. Um, again, to ROH's benefit, I would forgive the system crashing because this isn't 2,000 people that are trying to download the stream and that are paying for it. These are probably two times, three times, maybe four times as many people that are just trying to gravitate to something different because the option was there that it was free. Yeah. Hopefully, the presentation that we got, the service that we got last weekend, doesn't reflect what service they got every single time. But from the stories that of, of the reasons why they got, fell off of Go Fight Live, it might be what they got every time. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to order their next couple of pay-per-views despite the fact that the product is product is really really good i'm not i'm not going to order them because yeah. i'm going to have to wait and see if you know they have uh, they display a track record of them actually getting rid of these bugs and these fixes this is what took them out of the i pay-per-view uh, uh business so to speak you know, a few months ago because of all of these, uh, yeah. you know, feed issues. So until they show that the feed issues are gone, I won't even consider buying an ROH pay-per-view. I mean, this one was free, so I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, let's do it. Which characters are left? I mean, the the one of the best ones I thought that these had, which the reason they had the tournament in the first place was because Jay Briscoe was thinking about leaving. Yeah. You know? And Mark, oh, God, the Briscoes. They're, they're characters in itself that's worth watching. But again, another situation to where they deserve their, the characters deserve a bigger platform and they might get it. Who's, who, besides Ciampa, who else would you put in that kind of spotlight? Uh, I don't know. I mean, did you, did you, did either of you guys catch, um, try to sit through the interview that, um, with BJ Whitmer? BJ Whitmer and, um, Jimmy Jacobs? Yeah. I tried. The, the, the stream messed up and I checked out during mm-hmm. that too. So. Yeah, I, I tried. I mean, I didn't really get the... I saw when Jimmy came in and BJ was... I don't know that much about BJ, the wrestler, so I wasn't really invested in the promo in the first place. Yeah, yeah. for anyone, Jimmy that's, listening, Jacobs, I know. anyone yeah. that's listening, it's BJ, the wrestler, get your head out of the gutter. <laughs> hey, he should have thought of that before. Jimmy Jacobs is another character that's been flushed out pretty good. Like yeah. The, um, yeah. I'm kind of surprised no one's like, grabbed him whatever. up already. Yeah. Yeah, zombie princess. Zombie princess. I think it was something along those lines. <laughs> What'd you call him? Gothic queen. <laughs> <laughs> it shows how much I don't watch, but I'm trying to watch. Like I'm trying to All get right. invested, and the and that's another character that I would think, who's uh, one of those guys that's been in Ring of Honor for so long, you would think he'd have a, a more prominent role. More prominence mm-hmm. in there. He's just kind of floating, in like mid card. Yeah, and it's not like he can't go. I mean, you know, he's a pretty good wrestler too. I remember back in the days of uh, the Age of the Fall, you know. But it felt like he was always the second to Tyler Black when they were in that group. Mm -hmm. And then when he was with Aries, he he always felt like the second of the group. Yeah, even though he was the leader of that stable. Yeah, it didn't feel that way. Even now, like, during the interview, it still came across as though that storyline that they're trying to do with with BJ and and Jacobs, it still feels like Jacobs is... The secondary figure compared to B.J. Whitmer. Yeah, but if you have the best dang show in the world, it doesn't count for a hill of beans if nobody could watch it. So I think that's all we can really say right now about Ring of Honor. The little bit that I did get to see, and I, I'm guessing you two would agree, it was fantastic. Um, but you, you didn't get to see it. So... There's another you thing know, I wanted this... to I wanted to bring up. Okay, I don't know this what the state of independent wrestling is mm-hmm. for places like Ring of Honor, but in a market like Philadelphia, yeah, if you're having trouble filling your seats in Philadelphia, I don't I'm not I'm not aware if this is the same place where they tape their their tapings mm-hmm. their their ROH tapings, but man, I expected a whole lot bigger crowd than what we ended up with in in, the, in Philly of all places. You yeah. Know? It, I was really surprised. I thought the San Antonio crowd that we had was more 
yeah. populace wise than what ended up in Philadelphia. And I'm, it just staggers me that they would have it there. If that's what they ended up with. Yeah. Um, from what I could tell from like Twitter and stuff and people talking about Ring of Honor and their reaction to the show while they were live tweeting and whatnot was that um, ROH isn't as popular as it once was. And uh, there's other other factions out there like the one you mentioned earlier, Travis, uh, PWG. You know, people are gravitating more towards those and kind of leaving Ring of Honor and stuff and uh, Pro Wrestling Syndicate and all that. Th th those are getting a little bit more steam, so to speak. So, I mean, it's, the fan base is still there. It's just that they're not there for Ring of Honor. You know, R Ring of Honor right now is kind of not in vogue anymore in, in that area. You know, so... I don't know. For us, it's never really been in vogue because we're down here and we don't get to see them all the time. So when we do come down to San Antonio, it's, it's like a big when deal. When they come to Texas, it's it's a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> but honestly, we don't see most of their stuff. They never hardly ever come down here. Um, so we don't get to attend their events. I mean, I wish that we were more into it than what we are. But the truth of the matter is that that's not the reality. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. But I, I think that's more than enough. Ring of Honor talk for tonight. Shall we move on, guys? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you want to talk about TNA or WWE? If I had a coin to flip, I would flip it right now. Okay, well. All right, the yellow side is WWE. Uh, okay. Did you just throw your phone? I'm surprised it landed. <laughs> okay. Right. We're All doing right. WWE. Well, okay. okay. WWE then. All right, fine. Let's talk about WWE. Yeah, well, let's talk about... There and you said there. Well, he about, said it. Let's talk about you. Okay. Why did you miss the first hour and a half of WWE television on uh, Monday? Of Raw? Yes. I missed the first hour and a half of Raw because I had satellite issues again. Uh, so, yeah. Direct TV, man. They, they done me dirty. Mm. Mm -mm. See. <laughs> you didn't catch it on Hulu? No, no. Um, Hulu's I'm, edited, right? Yeah, it's an edited, See. abbreviated version that apparently gets loaded on Tuesdays. But I mean, I, it's not apparently it does. Okay, it's, well, it gets loaded on Tuesdays. Yeah. I, I didn't. I'm not, I wasn't even aware. But even if I was aware, I wouldn't have had a chance to to watch it. So mm. you know, wake up, go to work, come here. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. What's your point, Chris? Do I ever have a point? No. Well. I just want to put... <laughs> <laughs> that was too easy. That was. All right. So what do we think of uh, of Raw? Yeah, I didn't get to watch the, the beginning of it, but... Uh, what did you like from what you saw? What From what I did see? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I did enjoy the, the main event there. You know, the 11 on 3. I thought it was interesting, uh, although it was kind of confused as to why the hell did we have an 11 on 3 when we had one on SmackDown. I was very confused as to what was actually going on. Um, you know, I understand that the one on SmackDown was a gauntlet, so I didn't know if well, this was the actually, same thing, but it was a handicap. So. They didn't actually do that match on SmackDown. Well, they tried to. It got, they went halfway through they it. They went right? halfway through it, and that's when, it got, when Triple H came out and said, stop. Stop wrestling, and then then they stopped. Uh, I don't know. I was like, what, well, why are they? <laughs> that doing must have been part of Phil's event. <laughs> yeah. So why didn't you watch all the SmackDown, Travis? Because I fell asleep. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Chris, was there anything you missed this week? Um, sleep. You missed because sleep. I was because I was watching as much as I could. Out doing that underwear shopping, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find that G-string you were looking for finally? It wasn't edible. Ah, oh, okay. You know, sometimes, Game look. You know how hungry I've been getting lately, so you know, if I, need, if I need to make a pit stop and I'm in the middle of nowhere, I, I want to know that at least I have a, a fallout plan. So, nom nom nom, you know it. <laughs> gotta, gotta prepare for all contingencies, right? Yes. Oh, God. All right. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, you mentioned it. I did. It is all my fault this time. Anything on SmackDown that um, deserves a mention? You know, SmackDown just wasn't all that memorable to me. It, nothing really stuck out. I mean, everything was kind of building towards, uh, you know, 
that whole gauntlet match and basically the whole night was about uh, punishing and getting back at these people that that did the uh, protest and whatever. And it, then of course there was a thing with uh, you know Del Rio and uh, Rob Van Dam where you know Triple H told Rob Van Dam, "Hey, you're going to get your match." And all of a sudden Del Rio jumped on it. It all seemed kind of weird, but it all seemed as though the whole night was geared towards this. Uh, you know basic storyline the overarching storyline of all that's going on on raw you know the uh corporation versus everybody i like the fact that the storyline is going through all the shows okay or just raw and smackdown i just wish if this was the case that they just get rid of the world heavyweight title belt and either the u.s or the intercontinental that drastic huh yeah if they're going to continue the storylines, they're going to have. I don't want to get into big debate about the draft. I mean, the the brand split. I'm just that's just my two cents on that. I just wish if they're going to, if they're going to have the superstars go to different, all you know, Raw and SmackDown, then we already know. We've already said it on the show that the World Heavyweight Titles just doesn't mean nothing anymore. So just get rid of it. Get rid of the belt. I don't care about RVD versus ADR again. I didn't like the brand split in the first place. Yeah. Much less a second another match. Really. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to go that drastic, but I'm on the same boat as far as the, um, the fervor for a rematch of RVD and ADR is just not cutting it. Well, hell, there wasn't a fervor for the first time when they wrestled, you know. So, yeah. so let's give him another one. <laughs> Yay! No. Anything on Raw you thought was memorable, Trev? Yeah, there's a, a couple things. There. Pick something. You're gonna laugh when you, when you, when you hear this. Oh, am I? But. uh the Miz. <laughs> God. Schoolgirl laughing at everything. <laughs> um, and you need to mop up under the table. <laughs> Damn it, again? Is that's it, why That's why he got the new tile. Yeah. yeah. Safe to say another week of The Miz doing good selling. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Okay. I still hate The Miz. Okay. But I like the fact in... We've talked about this before about how I like any main storyline that gravitates other wrestlers to it. Yeah. The Miz is going to be someone that was in mid card obscurity for a while. They're going to, I think this is going to bring him back into the fold Mm -hmm. uh, with that. um, Along with some other people that I'm sure we're going to be talking about here in a second. Okay. But um, yeah, the, the Miz's promo. Uh, that's probably one of his best promos he's done. Yeah, uh, you know we there's we, with one bot the one little yeah, button there the one little blemish. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's he had to be the tool like he always is, and yeah, he had to say his little catchphrase in the middle of this really good promo. But yeah, well, what was the exact line? He's uh, like, oh, pay payback is coming, and it will be awesome. Yeah, like, it just can't, didn't fit. He can't use the word. Um, Bitch is what he should have said. He can't use the word um, pissed off and then shove it up your ass and then in the middle of it just say awesome. Like that yeah. just didn't, it didn't fit. It didn't fit the demeanor. Like he he, he won me over later, mm-hmm. but that was just a speed bump that I had to get my yeah. I had to catch my speed up all over again to get back to yeah. to red line. It was like, I oh, this is cool. my my only other gripe about that is I think this should have been like next week or two weeks from now. Really, I think that beating that he took. He should, have week, sold he, sh- he should have been out for a couple weeks at least. Okay. Yeah, I, I could agree with that. Because he got the, the little chair on the throat, and they said he had thorax messed up and everything. He's talking, or his little scruffy voice this time. But, I mean, you know. Oh, there was an injury update on the Facebook machine, like, two days later. That said, injury update. Miz refuses to miss any tour dates. Nah. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. I remember, I remember back uh, Randy Savage versus Ricky Steamboat. And Randy Savage took the ring bell, and he yes. slammed it down on Ricky Simo's throat. He was out for, what, how many months that he was out? A yeah. long time. Yeah, now this dude gets stomped in the throat with a chair, and he's back the next week. Yeah. <laughs> it's that super soldier serum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's, okay, that's all I wanted to say about that. But yeah, that, that was, for Miz, that was a good promo. Well, I want to talk about the big show in that, yes. in that yes. whole situation there. I mean, see. see. <laughs> the big show, um, pretty much said a whole lot of stuff without saying nothing mm-hmm. um he just kind of stood there looked at the miz and you know was like yeah yeah and then that's when steph came out and did her thing and then pretty much said hey big show knock him out 
And this time there was no crying, no hesitation, no, oh, I don't want to hit you. No, he just said, okay. Well, just there isn't around. no dusty Boom. roads. That's why. Well, that's true. You know, it's funny whenever he just did that like that and he knocked him out. I was like, oh, well, it's because of the Miz. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have, too. I have no problem knocking out the Miz. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, <laughs> but in all seriousness, I think that's a, kind of a turning point for the character. And yeah. I think he is actually turning like, to the dark side. Yeah, going to be a full on heel. And, you know, it, which is good because it makes sense for the storyline. Makes sense for a storyline. But, man, Big Show's been. Face, heel, face, heel, face, heel for so many times. I don't think he, honestly, I don't think he should have come back as a face. Because he left yeah. as a heel. I mean, that's, he's, yeah. I think he's more, he's two different people. Like, when he's a heel, he's a monster, badass heel. But when he's a face, he's the lovey-dovey, you know, joking around. Yeah, knucklehead, yeah. yeah. So, um, Captain Insano shows no mercy. Shut up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It, it, I, he should have just come back as a, as a heel in the first place. But you wouldn't have had this moment right here where you... Right. Anyway, that's... Yeah, that's so it makes sense for his storyline, but just for the overarching body of work of the character of the big show, it kind of doesn't fit. But uh, just for the storyline itself, I'm okay with it. Yeah. 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 But it, it was interesting that it's finally happened. And do you think that the turn happened too quickly? That's a question I had to pose to myself on that. Normally I'd say yes, but in this case, I couldn't take another week of... Five minutes of Big Show like agonizing over if he's gonna punch a guy and he starts crying and stuff. It's like just do it, and he finally did it. Yeah, so. just quit being a bitch, Big Show, and do it. Yeah, yeah. The, and I don't even think he's turned full blown heel yet either because the way he walked out after he knocked out the Miz when Stephanie McMahon, the Big Show reacted to the Miz trying to hype him up like he knows he should be doing it but he just can't well you pointed something out when you saw it like as soon as stephanie started walking out and then when stephanie walked out big show already had this oh fuck i already know where this is going yeah mm. i'm not gonna waste 10 to 15 minutes out here i know what she's gonna ask me to do fuck it i'm gonna just do it knocked him out and as soon as he knocked him out he didn't acknowledge stephanie he didn't acknowledge anybody he just yeah walked and left if he shook mm. her hand or something that would have been a heel yeah. turn like, like okay, because he didn't show there. joy in doing it, so yeah, I guess he's yet. not a full on yet. yet. Yeah, he's not a full on heel yet. I guess we haven't really mentioned it, but okay. Good job to Stephanie too. She she was. Oh God! You gotta you gotta hate her. You gotta. Stephanie <laughs> is such a bitch. Good job, Stephanie. <laughs> but bringing up what she brought up, it's all true. <laughs> this might be the Miz's final chance to make something of himself. Think so? I think so. Because he, there's no way that the guy could go from highest rated WWE champion of all time on television ratings, going to WrestleMania, even though he was overshadowed by John Cena and The Rock, yeah. leaving WrestleMania as a WWE champion, and all of a sudden, he's opening grocery stores and yeah. signing autographs at Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, it's some of the jab if it. I don't know if, if it's them working us, but some of the jabs they throw out make a hell of a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, they are, like, I guess I don't want to say insider terms or anything, but there's a lot of, like, inside stuff you would... know stuff. If you didn't... If you're just, like, a casual fan, you know, like, what? Half the stuff would fly yeah. over your head. You yeah. Know, yeah. Unless you're really paying attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, S.H.I.E.L.D. We saw the uh, the premiere of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., <laughs> and there was about a thousand references mm -hmm. to all their movies that if you wouldn't have watched any of them... You can still enjoy the show, you but, still enjoy you the show know, but you wouldn't know. Yeah, you, you missed that. The little geek would be like, oh my god, they use the word extremist. Oh my god, the car's flying. Oh my god, that girl's got boobs. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. So. Stuff that you and me were doing. But yeah. oh, Abel yeah. was over. Just like, what? What's going on, guys? He's like, I, I, didn't see I enjoyed the show. I just didn't know, like you said, like half the stuff that was, you know, <laughs> reference. So, it was a good show. Hell yes, it was. Yeah. We should take a break and talk about the show. <laughs> <laughs> talk about Agents of Shield. Oh, no. Well, I, I wouldn't be able to to <laughs> contribute much except for yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, stuff did fly. Uh, <laughs> hey, you got your wish. I mean, you don't have to wait till the end of the season. Yes. Lola, Lola. Oh, she my flew. lovely. Mm. She flew. Right. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's technically the first review of the of, um, Ages of Shield that it will be hitting the net because we just saw it. I'm sure there's already reviews yeah, yeah, there's there's from some more important right people now. than us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we yeah. Didn't do. <laughs> I can just see the headlights now. R wrestling podcast put up the first review of Ages of Shield. <laughs> they beat TMZ to it. Like, oh what? shit! Yeah. <laughs> 
Silly Abel. Yeah. TMC doesn't do reviews. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes? They only do movies. Mm. Who does TV? Who does TV reviews? The internet. TV, we yeah. should do it. Plug it. We'll have a Thursday show where <laughs> we'll we talk th- smack yeah. about the Emmys. <laughs> Did you watch these? I didn't watch the Emmys. They're, they're boring, dude. I can't... St- I... That's the... Uh, I didn't watch <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Breaking Bad won for Bruce Did they? Yes. Yeah. Oh, cool. Apparently they should have won more, right? Did they yes. nominated for a lot? Yes, they should have. Freaking Homeland. Taking did, everything. Did the WWE win any Emmys? <laughs> You're funny. Okay, what's next one? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Propeller with Tony Cesaro? They didn't get any nominations? Yeah, I know, right? Fuck, <laughs> oh, man. That's the award stuff I stopped watching. Like, the VMAs, the Emmys, the Oscars. Dude, I haven't watched the VMAs and I can't remember how long. I, honestly, I... I I don't watch any of that mess anymore. The last movie award, like MTV movie awards, I watched was around this. I think it was the same year that Trans- the first Transformers movie came out. Yeah, because everybody was talking about Megan Fox. That's what it was. I think the last award show that I was looking forward to watching was um, the Oscars that the wrestler was nominated for um, Best Picture, and um, Bruce Springsteen was supposed to perform the the theme song that that was made for that movie, and at the last minute it got cut, and they he didn't perform it, but. Everybody else performed their crap, and I was like, fuck, I don't want to watch that anymore. Well, it's more for white people anyways. So. Uh, <laughs> that must have been why I liked the the Oscars where the uh, Three Six Mafia did, got the Oscar song for, mm-hmm. for that uh, Hustle and Flow rap song. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they did the performance, and all the white people sitting in the crowd are like, what the hell is this going on? What are we, people what are we, like, yeah! I don't know. <laughs> Sorry we taking over. <laughs> Sorry not here from pimp bitches. Uh, uh, there aren't hidden moments like that anymore. Uh. Wow. So you mentioned Santino in there. <laughs> Hell of a transition there. Yeah, I know Ooh. that that was a stretch. That was um, the whole point of the talk. David. A little were, bit. Were you not paying attention? You didn't get the notes. No, no, no. I didn't get any of them. Oh, so you're going to the Fandango topic? We need to make it quick because apparently somebody doesn't like Fandango over here. Right. Yeah, this guy, the white guy that's practicing in Spanish. See, <laughs> so Fand- <laughs> Fandango and Santino had a match, and it was really strange. See, <laughs> um, you know, they gave Santino these these couple of prominent wins. You know, one over uh, uh, Cesaro, and then one over uh, Swagger on uh, SmackDown. And then they have him fight Fandango and then lose to Fandango. So I'm kind of confused on what they're what they're doing with the Miz here. Or the Miz. Why did I say the Miz? Because <laughs> you're still I'm, ooh, ooh. <laughs> with uh, Santino, rather. Yeah. What, what the hell are they doing with this guy? Like it doesn't really make a whole lot of it's sense. Hard man. The power of the curtsy. That's what it is. <laughs> it's the force, the dark side, and the curtsy. Or Summer Rae. Oh yeah. Aye. Summer Rae. Hey, she mm. got her own chant. She did. Yeah. Oh man, don't even get me started. That Chicago crowd. There's a difference between cheering for stuff that's supposed to be in the storyline and then cheering for just wanting to get attention. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, these fans were not putting themselves over. Right? And I've no I'm noticing that in the last couple of weeks that there's fans that suddenly want to take it upon themselves to be the show mm-hmm. when they're yeah. the ones that are buying the ticket to watch the show, not to be a part, not to become the show. And it's really starting to affect. It's getting into the it's a bad trend. It's, it's affecting my um, my attention span. Like it's easier is, for me to mute it or to fast forward yeah. it or to turn it off and watch something else when that's happening more consistently than. And the normal. sad thing is, you can't do anything about it. Yeah. Except when we go to live shows, and you know what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was about to say something like that. Like, you, you're we, complaining about all this here. Just wait till yeah. TLC comes to town you, and I will be the dude standing up and telling people to shut the F up and tell the no, merchants to get but, laid and tell all the black people to hit the white people and all the Mexicans to go get jobs and everybody to shut the hell up and watch the show. That's going to be me in the center. That will be me. But until then, there's three months of a-holes and morons and idiots and virgins chanting stupid shit at the show, ruining for the people that are trying to watch it. I, you. Right. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, Chris. I mean, you're you're one of the craziest, loudest, rowdiest ones, and you're complaining about other people getting attention. I mean, you're over here calling the the, the kettle, kettle black. black. Yeah, hey, yeah, I see. Yeah, we're on the same page. No, he's this is different. Okay, because 
First of all, it's just one guy. I mean, yeah, that's true. No one, no one chants along with him. Yeah, he, mm-hmm. just, he just stands up. I don't do chants. Yeah, he just yells. Stuff. I just, yeah, you just yell. I just point out crap at people that put that give us crap. I don't know. You just start the anybody but Orton chant. <laughs> <laughs> that caught on pretty quick. <laughs> But it, well, well, to your defense, that was pertinent to the match. I mean, yeah. you know, that was at the yeah, SmackDown you're not taping. JBL or something like that, or, or yeah. Michael Cole or Summer Rae I or took, Randy Savage. I, or I equate those those chants, like the Randy Savage and the JBLs and the the Coles. I'm, I'm equating all those chants. They they migrated instead of chanting boring, they're chanting those names, hmm. which I guess is not as bad as boring. I don't like the boring chants myself, but I don't like if the you're gonna chant, either. if you got it, if you got it, if you got the need to chant, you know, and it's gonna be something different from boring. Hey, why not? You know, rainy sound. I'm just waiting for the day that they go old school and put applause signs or boo signs that light up to the, <laughs> tell the audience, "You are the audience. You do what we tell you, or we throw you out." <laughs> applause imagine, now. Could you imagine if like like sitcoms had fans in their <laughs> watching their shows? Yeah, and they started doing chants and all that. I'd be sitting back there during the Mary with Children taping. Bundy, flush the toilet. <laughs> yeah. God, these fans, I'm telling you. Well, uh, they had their moments. Yeah, that's for what I was the most say. part. It was still a pretty hot crowd, though. Yeah, this was a good crowd. Yeah, well, like, Chicago. Yeah, it's a respectful crowd. Well, l- let's talk about whenever the the crowd decided to really go freaking nuts, and let's talk about the CM Punk promo. <gasps> Uh, no. Travis, why don't you tell us what you don't like about it? Well, first of all, it is punk, so there's it's hard not to like it. Mm-hmm. My only thing is, I think it went a little too long, and the fact that let let me back up. If I was from Chicago and I was in the arena, I would be going crazy for this promo. Uh-huh. But I'm not from Chicago, and I wasn't there, so I don't really give a shit about what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, well, I can understand that. That was a very pro Chicago um, promo, you know, talking about the Blackhawks and you know all this hockey. What the hell's hockey anyway? And um, I'll explain to you later. Yeah, hockey. What? It involves yeah. wood. You would be familiar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice, good job, good job. But um, you know, it, it felt like it was. CM Punk kind of having a, an inside joke time with Chicago. And I could appreciate that kind of stuff if that happened on the regular with other towns. Uh, but it, it doesn't happen on the regular. It, it happens in Chicago with Punk, and that's it. <laughs> Just like it happens in Boston with John Cena. No, well, not even. No, not they, even. Boo, they boo him too. Yeah, there's, there's well, yeah half the crowd boos Cena. No, when, when Punk comes out in Chicago... The whole place just blows the f up. Yeah, I one mean, of the uh, top twenty reactions of all fine reactions of all time on WWE.com was CM Punk at um, Money in the Bank before his match with John Cena. The ovation he got was bananas. Yeah, oranges, mangoes, whatever fruit you want to use. I don't want to gimmick infringe on you or Gorilla because you've thrown the bananas line a lot. Have I? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The little details that that bled into the storyline made sense of why he was using the hockey analogy and how the Blackhawks won the, the series because he literally said in the promo that he was considering giving up and quitting. Right. So the way he used the reference, whether it's the Chicago team or a Houston team or an L.A. team or the Yankees or whatever team they wanted to use, the, for the, the, story, the wrestling storyline to tie into it, it made sense. There were times it dragged. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, because it took a lot of explaining to do, but um, in that moment, in that uh, with that audience, they made up for it. Yeah, and you know, whenever Punk was like ad libbing stuff and interacting with the crowd, I mean, oh, that that was freaking great. You yeah. know, um, well, I mean, it was great for the the crowd to be able to do that, interact with him at the at the arena. Yeah, what what I was referencing a little bit more on that was when uh, Heyman was already out there. <sighs> Heyman, and, yeah, and the, Punk goes, yeah, 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 I'm gonna get him. Yeah, I'm gonna get him. Yeah, I'll yeah. get him soon enough, or something along those lines. Like that kind of ad lib stuff that Punk does, that Punk does very well. Like what was it, like uh, two months ago or something, where there was the the fat dude in the front row that he uh, kept making fun of. You know, like like if he could keep, Milton. yeah, if he could keep doing stuff like that, man, that'd be you know great. Um, but it, he doesn't get to do it all the time, though. And I, I wish he would do it more. And maybe that would make 
well, non-Chicago more, crowds more excited. Eh, if he did it more, it wouldn't be so special. It, it, yeah, that's get, true, I guess. It'd get worn out, like the pipe bomb-ish kind of thing mm-hmm. that he was trying to go for after a while. Like, yeah. oh my god, the first pipe bomb was excellent. He used to do it all the time. And then he started to do it more, and it became, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, but the, the thing that uh, I thought was a little better was the post-promo. Yeah. You know, after he said, you know, I, he said, don't worry, I'm going to get him, you know. Um, and then he finally went out and got him, and that's when the... He got bum rushed there. Yeah, by Ryback and. Uh, but you know Curtis what? Sexton. I this was like right after the uh, the other beat down. Uh, who got beat down? Um. Oh, this was um after RVD got demolished yeah. by Orton. Yeah. yeah. The this is right bank. after that. This is right after that. After so, the commercial break that was uh, the, the action that happened exclusively on the app, uh, yet yeah. they showed it on the television anyway, so it's no longer exclusive. Yeah, they showed Del, Del Rio coming in and beating up RVD some more. Well, I mean, before that, the, before the commercial break, I mean, he got beat down for like ten minutes by uh, Orton, and then they then they show what happened uh, during the commercial break, and then they go back, and then we're about to see another beat down. So I actually started like, okay, I don't want to see another beat down. So I started to fast forward, and then I had to stop and rewind it because he was actually taking him out. I mean, he was actually yeah, but, yeah. and that was a good fight sequence. A nice little scuffle. Like, that leap yeah. that he took from oh, the top God, of the yeah. stage to Ryback. Well, oh, even yeah. then, even then after that, when he got back up, and then uh, Curtis came out, and he did that little the roundhouse kick to the back of the head. Yeah. Yeah, CM Punk was pulling out some jujitsu ass shit out there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> some kung fu fighting. Oh, um, and he got put in his place scary. I got, I got, I got kind of worried whenever he did get put to the table. Because the way the he was kind of close to the edge, and the way the edge kind of it looked like out. when the table broke, his head hit that yeah. metal part. That that's what break. I was thinking. Yeah, you know? and um, it's not the first time that Ryback has botched moves like that where you would think someone would get really hurt. Yeah, <laughs> you know you would you wouldn't want Ryback to get the kind of reputation that someone like oh say Mister Anderson does. Yeah, but or RVD or RVD <laughs> lately. Yeah. but man. Well, Scary shit, son. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if you guys saw it, but supposedly there were some reports coming out of Raw uh, after that segment of Ryback being in hot water because of him not putting... Because uh, that military press looked awful bad. Yeah, he didn't put him through the table properly. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much truth is behind it, but I did see it on uh, you know on the interwebs earlier today that that was uh, well, something that... <laughs> yes. If it's on the internet, it has to be true. Right. So. Yeah. So I mean, if if he's getting talking to and getting in hot water for you know doing punk dirty, uh, that's gonna be kind of uh, that's gonna suck for him if that continues. Because now we're gonna have another top heel kind of out of the picture. Which uh, I think you're jumping the gun a little bit. I think you're reading too much into that. This is a if here's was a, what I'm oh, reading yes. into. Okay, man, Curtis Axel's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> man, he is like. Third fiddle in that whole group, like he ain't even second fiddle. Like I said it last week, he's not he even third out fiddle Heyman in the storyline. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he wheeled out Heyman, walked away. He was he was the chauffeur. He's, he's goon number three. Yeah, like if he was like if he was like a credit to a movie, his name would be goon number three. Yeah. <laughs> like, like who's more important? Hinchman, Hinchman, that's it. Hinchman number three. Yeah. Who's more important to their faction? Curtis Axel in the the Heyman family or Wes Briscoe in the Aces and Eights? Wes Briscoe. <laughs> it didn't take long for me to answer. Uh, and Wes doesn't even have any gold. Right? Yeah. That's a sad thing. Yeah. I mean, not, not that, but the fact that he's... That, that Axel's, Axel's an IC champion. champion. No feud. Right. What I mean, he has this by proxy feud with Punk, but it's not even... Punk's not going to fight for the IC title. And it's not even for the, yeah, it's not even for the title, so yeah. there's no focus on... on and now, uh, they announced uh, Punk versus Ryback. Yeah. You know what they should do with all this is reveal, bring it to to the public's attention that uh, Kofi and Punk are like best friends and have like Kofi and Punk be taking on Ryback and Axel. And, you know, Kofi's been fighting for an Intercontinental title forever. And hell, he wrestled at the pay-per-view for an Intercontinental title. Why don't they just make that public and kind of use that to kind of change up Kofi a little bit, move away from the Jamaican stuff and all that, and just be like, hey, I'm, you know, CM Punk's buddy. And, yeah, they need to do something with Kofi. Here's yeah. the thing. Okay. Kofi and Punk have been tag team champions before. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there doesn't really need to be a much of a reveal, mystery reveal, that they're buddy-buddy. Okay. The problem is, I think, for some 
obtuse reason, WWE is still trying to push Kofi Kingston as a single star. So they're not going to try to do this tag team feud with Punk because they're still trying to... I don't think he, I don't think Abel's talking about a tag team feud. I think he's just talking about bringing him in so that he can get a rub off this feud and then he can go after the IC Axel, title. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which I think he should have won the match at the pay-per-view whenever he did an impromptu fight. Yeah. That way, whenever that elimination handicap match came up, the IC title wouldn't even been in the picture. Here's the other issue. We don't care about Curtis Axel anymore. Would you care about Kofi Kingston as an IC champion? <laughs> Honestly, if it's just done in the status quo way that they've been handling it, no. But if they do it properly, they do it right, they get the Define rub. properly. Getting the rub off of Punk, you know? Uh, getting Punk kind of involved and show that they're like a, a buddy cop type of storyline in there. Where it's those two versus Heyman's two. That type of thing. And make it, you know, a little bit more important than just... Like, oh, another IC title defense. You know, make an actual storyline around it like... Uh, Kofi goes in there. It's like, you know what, Punk, you've been getting your ass whooped by the the Heyman family. I'm gonna help you out, and then you know, kind of do something with that. That that's what I think would work with that, and maybe it makes them a little bit more prom- prominent, makes the IC title seem a little bit more prominent, and uh, kind of just is a win win for two, everybody. Two things to okay. so do it properly. Okay. One, eliminate some of the belts. I've already mentioned that earlier. <laughs> yes. Make it more. Yeah, because if there's too many belts, who gives a shit? Yeah. Secondly, stop having champions have non-title matches on TV. Don't even have your champions wrestle on TV. Okay. You gotta. You want to make them feel special, and the only time you're going to see them fight, you got to pay for it. And I'm surprised that Heyman hasn't done that. Uh, there's a um, there's a PS to that that I've been that I've never even mentioned before to any, either of you guys. Ooh, I miss jobbers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't need to have Curtis Axel every week fighting CM Punk or, or Kofi Kingston or or whoever the face is, that's, or Dolph Ziggler. You know, just bring out... Yeah, throw out Rockstar Robbie. Have him, you know, lose a few matches as people. Yeah. That way, when... <laughs> just when, to get real. When he def- <laughs> just to get real, yes. <laughs> when he defends it against somebody of prominence, it's actually worth something. Yeah. But yeah, to I, your point, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, that's that's the third thing you can do. If they are going to fight on TV, do it against uh, jobbers. Yeah. You know, or enhancement talent. <laughs> so, <laughs> or a hardy boy. Yeah. <laughs> a hardy boy. <laughs> Either one. Yeah, pick one, yeah. Neither one of them do anything right now, anyways. So. Um, the, uh, man, I was going to go somewhere with that. I forgot where I was going to go. Oh, uh, you, I, I was hoping you were going to say that he forgot that there's actually a third person in the Haven stable. Oh, mm. yes, that's true. If there was a three on three, who would you have to fill in the team to go against Lesnar, Ryback, and Curtis Axel? <laughs> so we're assuming Kofi is the second guy? Assuming Kofi is the second guy. Okay. Punk, Kofi, and dot, dot, dot. Ooh. It's, it's, it's a hard call to say because you're going to have to, like, you would have to actually fill in the blank on it who would fit that that combination. Because no one has been involved with anything. Chris, do you have a, a suggestion? <laughs> do you want to answer your own question? <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> wow, so that was wow, a that, time. That, Yeah, that went absolutely nowhere. Wow. <laughs> uh, reform the Second City Saints? That could be a possible idea. The only thing about that is they have mentioned that he calls himself the Second, the second City Saint when they talk punk. about punk. Yeah. yeah. But then... You know, you have to bring in other guys that haven't been on TV. Yeah. That no one knows about. Except Punk. So why not bring in Cabana? You know, I that could have been a possibility last night. And there was some, some chatter on the Twitter about oh, Cabana coming out to make the save for Punk. And, you know, that could have happened. So, eh, sure. Why if, the hell not? If they do that, it's got to be in their home, their home yard, their home turf. Yeah. yeah. That way, if it happens, it's going to happen with a big pop. Because you think if it would happen in a podunk place like Baltimore, they wouldn't know who... Or which uh, all balls. Or which... <laughs> they wouldn't know who Coke Cabana is and the pop would be just right, exactly. You got to make it. You, you got to make it to where the reaction is going to justify the... Effort. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because if he comes out and makes a save and nobody gives a shit... You know, what difference does it make? Like, who's that guy that made the save? Is that a security guard? What happened? Yeah, who's that dude? <laughs> yeah. You know? But if they... That's Scotty Goldman! I yeah. know who that guy is! Yeah. 
<laughs> He's the best friend of the longest reigning WWE champion of all time. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you, you know what? Bringing, bringing Colt Cabana up, you could interchange the, sto- the proposed storyline that I brought up with Kofi Kingston with Colt Cabana. Both of those are interchangeable if you, you know, use it the right way. So, hmm. But I don't know if WWE will ever, you know, listen to us. <laughs> Sorry, Vince. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of people making the save and coming out of nowhere and whatever, we had uh, Goldust and Cody Rhodes. Come I up. liked it. Yeah. I liked, I liked it, it. too. Because it was surprising. I did not see yes. that coming. Yeah. It, it was pretty darn awesome. And I don't know if you're against it or not, but I got a kick out of him actually wearing his face paint. You know what? I am against it. <laughs> But continue. I no, it, it's first of all, it's just you wouldn't think that he actually wearing his face paint, and he's actually wearing his face paint. It's yeah. just the irony of that, you know. Because wearing his face paint in street clothes. Yeah, it's yeah. like I, I I said it's his war paint. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess so. I don't know. It's just yeah. cause his character. Yeah, if he hides in a bush of bananas, you won't see him. Right. Yeah. That's it, that's that. That's exactly. his camouflage. Yeah. 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 The, the Del Monte kind Well, of I don't know. Abel, Bush, and Bananas, he might actually see one of them. Anyway. <laughs> the fruit, Abel. Get you out of the gut. <laughs> I'm trying to over here. Um, I, I I didn't like the fact that he was in in the face paint. And get stick at your ass. You like it. <laughs> I agree with you. Okay. But you got to understand why. Why? The WWE Universe isn't accustomed to seeing Goldust without face paint. All the, the the vignettes that he got when they that raw that he came back to wrestle Randy Orton to defend yeah. his brother, the ninety nine percent of him on WWE television has been with the face paint, not without it. Yeah. So the reaction would be, "Oh man, it's Cody Rhodes and some chubby white guy that he, that's with him." Right. You know, as opposed to, "Holy shit, it's Cody Rhodes and it's freaking Goldust." Yeah. That's that's why I didn't like it either when I first saw it. I was like. Somebody must have really took time to be stealthy in the yellow to make sure they didn't get caught with fucking face paint. It's like, I yeah. want, that's like, why. When I saw it, it's like, I wanted to say, really? But then I was just laughing so hard. <laughs> actually, because the actually, streak with yellow paint is beating the shit out of Roman Reigns. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Just because of the fact that it was done, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like he actually, really, he actually like, fa- I got a kick out of it. I thought it was genius. now stay away for a couple of weeks. Okay, because right, again, but going back to if it happens every week, it's not special anymore. Save it. Maybe it turns into the Matt Hardy thing. Yeah. Save it to maybe not this week coming up, but the week after the pay per view. Or, yeah. at, the or, or at the pay per view. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Well, that's that. <laughs> that led up to the main event, which was the 11 on 3 mm-hmm. handicapped super spot fest. Um, do, you know, we haven't even had one yet. Um, but I, I want to pose this as a question. Do we want to say the 11 on 3 match of the week candidate? No. No? Okay. I couldn't stand the fact that everybody was getting pinned. Like, so oh, fast. don't be hating. Come on. Those eliminations that Roman Reigns got like this with the spear fest, man, Edge and Rhino would be proud. <laughs> mm. No, don't get me they wrong. Were, they were inventive. That spear that he got off of Zack Ryder, yes. I did not see coming yeah. whatsoever. He just leaped up there, yeah. The spear that demolished the huge Titus O'Neil. Oh, my <laughs> God. That looked awesome, too. Uh, I forget who else he well, got one off. Well, hold on, hold on. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm not saying that the spots weren't cool because they were freaking awesome. I'm just saying <laughs> the fact that it's like one hit moves and they're like pinned. True. That's the only thing that was bugging me about it. To your, but, but then again, if it was, it'd be like an hour long match. To their defense, primetime players already had a match. Yeah. RVD, the dumb, moronic, retarded, special motherfucker who has ripped tape over his ribs and over his arm and still wants to do a Rolling Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> Did it make sense? Um, who else had matches? The before? RVD elimination made sense to me because he was like the most. He was the most hurt. Yeah, and Kofi also had a match, so him being eliminated kind of quick. I bought it. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Those two I bought. So, you know. but the other and ones, not everybody got eliminated. I was waiting. I was like, oh man, how is this going to end up being Daniel Bryan against the Shield yeah. again? Yeah. yeah, and so and that also threw me off in a good way. The <laughs> fact that we got that it was different and we got them. Pretending to be the Shield and fucking with Seth Rollins. Yeah, yeah. The fact that it was Seth Rollins was the final guy I, for me. I don't know why I, I got a kick out of that. Yeah, you know. But um, the, the 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 end of the match, like once it got down to like the last like what four guys? Yeah, know, it was four. Um, the, and you started seeing the kinks in the armor of the Shield. Like Ambrose got eliminated. Yeah, I did like. I mean, I don't know. 
did you like the fact that it was like D-Bride that had to soften up Roman Reigns and then he tagged yeah. in the Usos and the Usos oh, and the, yeah. that was Finish. beautiful you know? yeah that the, the double super kicks right there <laughs> Ooh, that was cool yeah and the Usos actually going out and taking both of them out on the outside the, the end of the match if it was like condensed if they got rid of the first like six guys and it was just like Mm-hmm. Five on three, whatever. That would have been a nice little, like, quick main event and no commercial break. That, match. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would have been, to me, that would have been match of the week. That like, because was of all the other two stuff. commercial breaks in between that match. It was kind of long. Like, some of those eliminations should have happened quicker, mm-hmm. other eliminations should have happened a lot less quicker. Well, I, I, I more so now want to make it a candidate now that we've talked about this a little bit more. Um, and Couple that with the fact that we don't have any other matches of the week. I have Uno. Okay, for match of the week. Bring it out. Let's see it. The match. Hey, no, hey, 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 sit down. <laughs> you can't get around with this guy. He takes everything literally. Prime time players against the Wyatts. That match was great. You know what, sir? You are correct. That was a pretty darn good match. That was a really good match. The. The Wyatts did not fail in looking scary and intimidating. Darren Young did not fail in his babyface selling and even trying to get out of spots and still finding a way to get caught up and still being beaten down. Titus Young's hot tag, holy Jesus. He And then him being the size of the Wyatt brothers, just making it look more believable that, that he could take them out. Um, he was going to do the, the fall away slam mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on one and he saw the other one coming and said, the hell with this and tossed the, one, the first one like trash <laughs> and then just went after the second one. Yeah. Um, I think he finally timed his um, his dog seal bark. Like he did a splash in the corner and then he threw the dude down on the floor and then he turned around and threw his arms up and everybody barked along. Yeah. I think he's the, the pieces that he had, he started, finally started to put them all together and it's looking damn good. Yeah. And uh, that wicked... Um, Clothesline. I want to say... Um, the clothesline that the white that the white brother did the discus clothesline we spun around yeah the corkscrew thing that oh man it it looked fierce <laughs> and again another example of them protecting um, primetime players the tra- where Titus takes the pinfall and when the they win Darren's the one that I, in this case I didn't think of it as like that I just thought of it as the whites took out the bigger of the two guys yeah and it, it, the whole presentation and then um, um, the other Wyatt going in there and finishing off Darren. Um, the, the the Abigail's kiss kind of irked me a little bit because I don't know if Darren liked it or not. But other than that, <laughs> the whole presentation <laughs> was awesome. Start to finish, no botches, no flaws. It was entertaining. Match of the week candidate. Kind of That's my pick, actually. Okay. That sounds pretty good. You almost got me convinced. I might even say that's my pick just for a lack of other matches, but I'm still going to nominate uh, the 11 on 3. It's, it's a lot of talent. Yeah. It deserves a nomination. Yeah. But my pick is... Yeah, and I, I might go with that, unless we could come up with any other... I don't have any this week. I, yeah, I don't think there was any in TNA. Well, let's get to that. Okay, are we done with WWE? Yeah? Sure. Okay, let's talk about TNA. All right, TNA. Um, was there any matches of the week in there? Let's see, we had e- Ego versus Main Event Mafia. Um, I wasn't too fond of the match, though. Um, but there was something that I wanted to talk about for Ego. But I, I don't know, maybe jog my memory, guys. Was that match any good? I don't remember that match at all. Sting took most of the licking. Did he? Yeah, and Magnus took the pinfall from Robert Roode, I think. Yeah. Um, there were moments that I liked a lot, but match of the week candidate no. worthy. If, no? I, if, if I'm if I'm having trouble trying to remember all the stuff that happened in the match, it's not really match. Of the week that, that's what my problem is too. I just can't really remember. Okay, from, it's not a good match. match. Okay. From top to bottom, okay. TNA. This last episode, it was it was okay, but if you missed it. From other than the the way the show ended, you, the rest of the episode was kind of missable. Other than the title change, on ODB's title change, right? Which you know was predictable. We talked about that last week a little bit with Mickey James uh, not signing her contract. You know, and today they uh, I saw that they removed uh, Mickey James and Andersons from the roster page. Wait, yeah. and Anderson? Yeah. Oh, interesting. But uh, hmm. Anderson. Anderson. <laughs> yeah, ODB knocked up champion. Yeah, that's good I mean, for her. good for her. That's cool. I mean, we've seen it before. Had a fifty-fifty shot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. a great character to leave that built on to try to build a division around. As if they bother it... building the division, they need yeah. to like hire some other uh... buy out Shimmer or something. Yeah, I did see a couple of house show cards where um, ODB did wrestle Lady Tapa. 
So if there if, if Dixie was was on the money about trying to bring in fresh talent to liven up the any kind of division or roster, uh, Lady Tapa just from visual, just like Awesome Kong last week, we were talking about her yeah. weight loss and how that hurts her visual. Lady Tapa as a visual is a character. Um, real quick, since you just mentioned that, um, I don't know if y'all saw the link I put on Facebook. Yeah, I was but I did watch. Um, you know, Taylor Hendricks from the interview last week said she was about to fight for that the four way, the fatal, uh, fatal four way for the ladder, ladder match, match for the title. Um, I did watch that. I put the link up there on her on her Facebook page, but it was a pretty good match. Um, and Lady Top, I mean, she was of course the biggest one. I didn't realize how how big she was, or how, yeah. how tall and well, just how big she was. Uh, but yeah, tossing all the other ladies around and tossing the ladder around. Um, there's some pretty good spots in there for a ladder match, for, for a women's ladder match. You know, I mean, if we're talking about the knockouts division and the knockouts division needing to be replenished, you know, Lady Tapa, Taylor Hendricks, Blossom Twins, who are, aren't the Blossom Twins still on the payroll of TNA? If they are, why the hell are those four not in the freaking knockouts division? Those, then it's, it's marketing, gene, it's marketing, it's marketing one on one. You have twins, identical twins. Hello, look at Bella's over here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Technically, they're not identical anymore. No, you know what I mean. <laughs> the Bellas, yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I mean, it, hey, I, I'm all <laughs> for them doing that. Uh, the one problem that I foresee happening with that, and this might actually prevent them from getting signed, is the fact that the Bellas are there uh, in WWE, and I think maybe TNA will get too much heat and too much flack for, oh... Don't the, finish the, the sentence. If you're going where I think you're going. Of them copying right. WWE? We'll get to that. Okay. What difference does it make? They copy WWE on everything else. That's what's... Why, why would they get heat for that? Because all the fucking marks out there would give them heat for doing specifically that. It's another instance of that happening. But all the marks know they do I, that anyway. I'm not so. saying that, like, I'm going to be like that. I'm saying that that's something that could happen. Like... If if they were to get signed, oh my god, you know, then we will hear right. the end of it. Since we're going there, let's just hot shot right to the main event, yes. which was not the okay. main, event, which was not a match. It was AJ about to drop his pipe bomb again on Dixie Carter, and it turns out that Dixie decides that she wants to be a heel. Yeah, Dixie <laughs> flipped the script and said, "You know what? Forget this. You know, I want to be a bad person." Yeah, yeah, and she uh. She kind of let AJ have it. And, you know, AJ had a lot of points on his promo before she came out. Dixie had a lot of points when she came out, too. You know? To her credit, I loved how she ended the show. Got yeah. on the cameraman's mic. Turn off every, tur- turn off the camera. We're done. We're over. And they got, it went dark. Yeah. And they stayed dark and it rolled into Bellator. Yep. And I think <laughs> WWE does that like once. I think. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, for TNA. That's good. Yeah, yeah, I was surprised that we got the character of Dixie that we got. I was surprised she could pull that off. She didn't for the lack of camera time, the lack of story that she gets invested into the program nowadays. She actually did a good job. Yeah, and I don't know if where this is going as far as you know for the last few weeks, like AJ's been kind of like being a heel towards Dixie, you know. But does that mean like he's already he's always known that's how she is? And that's why he was, like, talking trash about her. Because all Maybe. of a sudden... Because she didn't just, like, defend herself. I mean, she went full on heel. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, it reminded me... Heel. It reminded me, and I, I swear, I, I don't mean to be rehashing anything here, but WCW. Uh, back when um, Bischoff, uh, he was turning heel for the first time. And, like, Roddy Piper knew it before... Like anybody else did, and he like he grabbed him by his shirt. Listen, you son of a bitch! And that's when the NWO came out. And, and at the time that NWO came out, no one knew what was like. Why is Roddy Piper like you know bad you know bad talking you know Bischoff? Uh, I think I, I got like remnants of that during this. It's like why was like why would AJ be like you know talking trash about Dixie when he's a face? Yeah, yeah. So you know, g- kind of going back to. The root of all this and the root of people not thinking that this was good uh, is that so many people were saying it's a rehash of what you just said, you know, WCW stuff, a rehash of... I'm not saying this is a rehash, I'm just saying that reminded me of that. Okay. uh, The complaints that the internet wrestling community has on TNA is just, is it rehashes of what's done in the past from WCW or NWA or ECW? Because hell, WWE does that too. Yeah. The problem is, is that they are... 
um, their knee-jerk reactions to what WWE is doing. I think the only time that TNA ever got a leg up on the WWE as far as ideas was when the beautiful people were created. Because mm-hmm. it wasn't long after the beautiful people were picking mm-hmm. up steam Flawless, yeah. that um, that um, Michelle McCool and Layla. Michelle McCool yeah. and Layla started forming as Team Flawless or whatever they were supposed to be. Yeah, you know that's probably the only time that TNA got that one up on them. That one point on the scoreboard, a million to one. That's the only one they got. But of course, we're looking at Stephanie being a total jerk to uh, to the roster. Okay, let's get Dixie to do it. Mm-hmm. Oh hey, they got the Nexus, and hey, they've got they've got the Shield going on. How about we get something together like that? Oh hey, how about we do something called the Aces and Eights? You know, everything that WWE is doing, TNA knee jerk knee jerk reacts to it by trying to put out the same thing. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's not. But the fact that they're always the second in line to do what they should be doing, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes even third because wasn't Scum and Ring of Honor come, um, taking shape before Aces and Eights started? I think so. Mm-hmm. Well, or was it around no. the same time? I think Aces and Eights was around before Scum. Okay, but still, I could be wrong though. They're yeah. they're always second in in the uh, in the frontier as far as being creative and coming out with something to top. They're always climbing up the la- climbing up the ladder instead of being on the top, keeping people down. I think in this case though, I think the whole Dixie turn was because they probably noticed that some people just don't like Dixie. So why fight it? Yeah, the whole ass Dixie thing that's been going on, you know, for the last what three weeks, where people were just sending in troll questions to Dixie. (laughs) Oh, were they? I didn't know about that part. Oh yeah, yeah, it was going on for a long time. Like Dixie went on her Twitter and said, "Hey, if anyone wants to ask me any questions about whatever, just send it in with the hashtag Ask Dixie," and like that just opened the floodgates. Like there was so many hater troll questions that like got sent her way. How many? How many did you send, Chris? Well, I, I, send it. Maybe I didn't, I didn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe they, they saw the reaction that Dixie was getting. They're like, well, they hate me so much. Why not? Why, why fight not? it? Why fight it? Yeah. You know, and, and that's kind of where I was going to go when I w- was first bringing up this whole thing about it being a rehash. There were so many people online that was upset about it. Oh, this is just a copy of, you know, Pipe Bomb and copy of this and copy of that. And, like, I don't care because... Movies do it all the time. TV shows do it all the time. Comic books do it all the time. Where they take the basic skeleton bones of a storyline and they put their their own twist on it and they flesh it out their own ways. And that's how I felt like uh, TNA's kind of doing doing it here with the uh, anti-hero versus the authority figure, which has happened plenty of times before in wrestling. So I am willing to give this a shot and look past the similarities uh, from other storylines, you know, and all that because I think this, that night, was good. I think their content was good. The way Dixie pulled it off was good. The way AJ pulled it off was good. It This AJ pipe bomb, so to speak, was better than the one from a couple of weeks ago. It was more organic. Yeah, it was it more organic. It didn't feel forced. Yeah, exactly. Here's the thing. With, with Here's my rebuttal to that. Okay. Roads are always going to be traveled. Every road's been traveled a number of times. If you will. If you will. But the reason people complain is because... TNA isn't just going through roads that have already been traveled. They're following WWE mm-hmm. on their roads instead of say instead of trying to go this other road that's already been gone to see where this goes. There's a difference between doing things that have been done before and then doing things exactly after somebody else is already doing them in that same time frame. You know, a counter to that would be if you really want to risk it, there. Fuck it, why not? Just throw it out there. Dixie just admits, you know what? The company's in bad shape. If anybody's going to bring it down, I'm going to do it. And have the wrestlers rebel against that. Yeah. And turn it into a full-fledged storyline. Throw it all out there. You think I'm a bitch? Fuck it. I'm going to prove it I'm a bitch. You you think this company's suffering? It is suffering. I'm going to kill it. Instead of you little internet geeks typing behind a keyboard or these little washed-up wrestlers that couldn't get a job in WWE or couldn't get a better job in Japan or have to come over here because they can't get it cut. They can't cut the mustard somewhere else. You know, and then and then there's your feud. The only bad thing about that is you do stuff like that about the actual company, and you're making it note that your company sucks. Didn't AJ already do that though in this last pipe bomb? He kind of did. He kind of did. But it's one thing from a disgruntled employee, but the boss saying that—that's a different thing. True. 
And you make the, if you make that part of the storyline, that's even worse. <laughs> if anybody could pull it off, it would have been Heyman. It's just the difference <laughs> but, of yeah. how far, Dixie's not Heyman. <laughs> it's just how far, like, like blurring the line between okay, this is this part of the of the of the true events is going to be storyline, and then we'll just keep this part separate, so we don't literally have to tell people, hey, we're broke. Yeah, you it know? might be when, a... like the sign in the crowd that said Big Show's worth twenty million dollars. You know, when when he's in a storyline right now that he needs the job. You know, so there's a di- there, there's certain ways, certain things you can keep under wraps, but still put some of that out there to where, hey, you know what? Fans will watch it because they understand it's relatable. It's kind of happening. Yeah. You know, and it'll get people um, vested into the show instead of just watching the show. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see how they go. And you know what? You're right. If they are, th- there is a difference between, you know, Following a, a a type, following a a, a a blueprint, and copying exactly you know word for word you know something that somebody else is doing. You're right. There is a bit of a difference in that. Hopefully, this here uh, will lead to some sort of divergence, and and they can show TNA can show that they can do what WWE is doing and do it better. Uh, by just putting their own twist on it, their own spin, and branching off a, a different way. Um, but if they don't, those same internet marks and, and all that out there will get all pissed off. And they're going to be like, ah, this is the same thing as WWE and you're copying whatever. So I hope that they can put their own twist, their own spin, and make it their own. Um, this, the sad thing I, I want to kind of tag on to what Chris just said about uh, they followed the road that WWE's doing. And anytime that TNA doesn't follow WWE and they do their own thing... And nobody doesn't work out too well. Well, let me back up. Sometimes. Okay, before Hogan and Bischoff, it worked out fine. Yeah, there you go. Once they came on and they tried to do their own thing, uh, the uh, three-way cruiserweight, I mean, cruiserweight, uh, X Division, Division. those didn't work out. No. Gut Check didn't work out. No. Fight Night didn't work out. No. You know, so everything they try to do, and they used to be so good about innovating new things, and now it's like when they try to do something, just is, they, don't, they don't stick with it. You know, True. it just falls apart. So I get. I think at this point they have to follow what works. You know, so just kind know. of pull their ass out of the gutter. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, see, <laughs> yeah. Oh, TNA man. I but I will say this. I'm excited to see what happens next week or this week rather. Um, I, this got my attention enough to where it's like, okay, I, I really want to see where this is going. I'm willing to give TNA that, that shot and willing to give TNA the benefit of the doubt on this one. Can one story save a company? Maybe. Depending on a lot of factors. I mean... No. Yeah, it can. Let's look at NWO. NWO storyline completely completely elevated WCW to where it overtook WWE and it was only the NWO storyline. Yeah, sure they had great cruiserweights, but there wasn't a great cruiserweight storyline. Did you hear what you just said? Hmm. They said the NWO elevated the WCW. They were never they had just started. They had, the Nitro had been around for maybe 2 years tops. They were nowhere near bankrupt. They were nowhere near death. There was no rumblings or anything like this. NWO took WCW admittedly to a new level. Mhm. That wasn't what saved WCW because WCW at that time didn't need saving. Because of the NWO, the WWE needs saving. It was because of Steve Austin. It was because of The Rock. It was because of Mankind. In the lower in lower levels, Mankind, Triple H, Undertaker. But it was more than just Stone Cold Steve Austin that saved WWE. TNA, as promising as what we got with Dixie and AJ, it, it's going to need more legs than just one. To cross the yeah. finish line, you know. So because of how good, how promising some of the stuff in TNA is looking right now, and because there's not really a lot planned after Bound for Glory, all that has got me interested at least to Bound for Glory. Okay. After that, my, whether my attention's there or if there's something to have my attention there for, that's going to be. That's all on them, right? That's all on them. Um, you know, speaking of other storylines in TNA, and I know that we kind of wanted to, to end on this, but this is something that just kind of, uh, we overlooked. Uh, do you think anything can come from Chris Saban's heel turn? No. No? He's, it's better suited for him, you know, and it's better suited the fact that he's back in the X Division. 
Yeah, that's true. That was the biggest mistake. They took him out of X Division. You know, you had to, before you, if you wanted to elevate him to World Heavyweight, great. Get him back in the X Division first as a singles competitor to let people re- remember what he can do. You know, but I don't think this is going to go anywhere. I mean, he, he's just going to be stuck in next division from now on. He might be, he'll probably win the title again, but. Um, for the storyline's sake, it makes perfect sense. Saban turned on Manic because Manic wanted to fight Jeff Hardy, who was the best. Yet Saban's been X Division champion so many times. Mm-hmm. He's been tag team champion so many number of times. I think that encompassed enough that he didn't need to waste two months of storyline time and attention by trying to fight for the World Heavyweight title and then losing it in his first title defense and then just being knocked back down to the X Division. All that was completely unnecessary. And I think yeah. that was enough damage that I don't know that... That World, that, t- that world Heavyweight title, that ruined... I mean, that... that I actually ruined it for him. I think so. I think. Okay. Like, I, I don't they think, never should have done that. I don't think Saban right now is going is, to... Is, if you're looking for that for the um, uh, for the supporting roles to the big to the big weight that's AJ and Dixie, I don't think you're gonna find it in Saban. Whether really? he's a heel, not or even face. a supporting role. You... Wow. No. So do you think this whole the... title run with Saban is akin to the title run that the Miz had two or three years ago? The Miz title run lasted like eight or nine months. It was built well because he won the money in the bank and the built towards that cashing and then leading up to it, not to mention X factors like Jerry Lawler's uh, mom dying of a heart attack, um, him still keeping up all the ratings and all of his followers from the from real world, him being in the main event high profile against John Cena at WrestleMania. That's nowhere near Chris Saban territory. But I mean, I mean, the after, you know, the fact that – now the Miz is kind of nowhere, you know, and now Saban's kind of nowhere after these kind of one-off, f- f- fluky. Well, fluky that's not to hear that because Saban, this is like a month ago. The Miz's, Miz's title, like, the Miz's okay. title, uh, the Miz's WWE title run is something he's going to keep in his career forever. Headlining WrestleMania, that's not going right. to ever hurt his career because, as far as I'm concerned, his career could end now, and he still had a great career because he, he was had, WWE yeah. champion. He went in. He went. You could say he was the. He he will say he was the main event at WrestleMania. He went in and as the role as the WWE champion against uh, Cena, and retained. He, and he retained. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot better than Chris know. Sabin won the title. He he got a, 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 a he got a title shot out of nowhere. He got. Um, he, he had a cheat the, to win. He had a cheat to win, and then his first title defense, um, two tapings later, he was and he already lost it, and then he already got redelegated back. The Miz at least had two or three rematches. Yeah, and he was still in the main event picture. You know, so the and so Saban, even you know what? Honestly, even if they brought back um, uh, Saban's partner, Shelly, Shelly? It, even that wouldn't really make a big dent anymore. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, I think not, that, not I, for not for heavyweight, not for supporting roles to try to no. keep the company afloat. No. no, okay, that's just my opinion. But it's just there's other stuff there. I mean, I still have a place in my heart for Joe. Yeah, you know he always produces. He always has good matches. He's always been a company guy. I want to see him in WWE, man. Um, Magnus is another guy that looks like if, if, if that that if you build right and don't screw up the storyline and he stays healthy, he could be a guy that you can that you can carry. But that goes back to TNA. They pulled the gun. They they pulled the trigger too late on Samoa Joe when he mm-hmm. first won the heavyweight title. Half the time he wasn't even carrying the belt. Um, they pulled the trigger too late on a couple of other people in that company, and it's just. A matter of time that if, if they don't do it right or if they screw it up with Magnus, that's just going to be another opportunity lost. Yeah. You know? I think not being able to re-sign and keep Christian was probably a really big blow to TNA too. Because they really built him up and Christian was like the king of the mountain there, you know, for the time that he was there. Christian was Hernandez the top was draw. the name I was going to say. The yeah, Hernandez that, too. They yeah. fumbled, fumbled the ball really bad with Hernandez. Um, to a lower extent... I would have been curious. I would have. It would have kept my attention. I would have liked to have seen something happen with um, Matt Morgan. Yeah, I agree there too. Um, yeah, that was a drop ball for sure. You know, and um, and this whole no abyss for the last year and a half is not helping whatsoever. 
Abyss is like one of those guys, like AJ Styles. TNA is the house that Abyss built. Yeah. But you could say that along with AJ Styles. Not and, to say that the Joseph Park character is not entertaining, but right now, I don't know if entertaining is what they need right now. Yeah, they need something that's more than just Stable. oh, that's 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 cute, like a yeah. like a Santino type thing. They don't. They already have that with EY. Let EY just do that by himself Hell, and let him that, take that the, role. The buddy, the buddy flick would look, would be even more dynamic if, if instead of it being Aaron Young and Joseph Park, if it being Eric Young and my pet monster Abyss. Well, it looks that like they're awesome. going that yeah. way, but I'm just saying for the last year and a half. Let's though. get to that point. Let's yeah. let's next week do it. Just. Fuck off on Joseph Park and switch back to Abyss. Get it over with. Obviously, it's they know it's the same guy. The, the joke's already done and dead. Who gives a shit anymore? Yeah. Get give us back Abyss. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Take out the fake teeth. Come on, put the way back on. Yeah. You know, hire James Mitchell. <laughs> yes. Do something. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Teenage ain't gonna last much longer. <laughs> <laughs> and Nash I'll... ran it on Twitter about how bad. Who? Kevin Nash ran oh. on Twitter last Thursday from what I've heard about how bad TNA apparently was or is. Or whatever. Oh, yeah. Sherry Jarrett ran it about how bad. Oh, I really oh it. yeah. That was a really interesting interview. It was. Um, man. He makes a good point. Like, what point is it going to be where Dixie's dad just says, okay, enough of this. Let's, let's, I want my money back. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm trying to. I'm or trying, I want to stop losing money. I want to stop losing money. You know, what it's. To that, to what Jerry Jerry was saying, that's pretty much all it's going to take. As soon as he says, we're done. That's it for yeah. Tina. You know, that's yeah. all it's going to take. Cause what are, what are the money they got? They don't have any revenue. Do they have any like, advertising revenue? Do they have any other kind of merchandise revenue? Do they have anything else to keep them afloat? Ticket sales? Anything? Well, I don't know. They, yeah. Again, we don't know their books, but you know. I'm just saying. I mean, yeah. most of their money, the only money that I know of that they have is from their investor. You know. I was never, I wasn't really that attentive. I do remember the last Nitro, but I didn't really watch every single episode of Nitro leading up to the last episode. Mm-hmm. I didn't really, I didn't really catch that many episodes of ECW on TNN, but I'm sure soon after the last episode of T- on TNN was when ECW folded. Yeah. For the wrestling historian in me, this is why I'm watching right now. Uh, yeah. TNA because I this is like the 911 like I'm, I saw the I saw the impact happen <laughs> now I'm watching the buildings tumble that's a now bit I'm of an watching, exaggeration now, now I'm watching the, the them extracting everything this is it like I'm waiting like, I want to see the end that way the historian in me knows how it happened because I missed out on WCW and ECW alright yeah the, the... <laughs> I, I want to see if I want to see how if they can get out of it I want to see how they get out of it yeah, you know that way I can keep watching. Will it. they ever be the same again? Even if they okay, say they 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 don't they don't fold. Are they ever going to be like, All right. worthwhile again? Here's another a finger snap contest. WCW before they went out of business, they were going to have a pay per view um, called the Big Bang, which basically they were going to reboot WCW all over again, starting at that pay per view. So when I snap my fingers, oh, shit. you are going to tell me. Who you're going to have as champion the night after Bound for Glory, and who is your number one contender for the World Heavyweight Champion. Oh, so fuck. I'm going to give you a second to breathe, Travis. AJ Styles is champ. Uh, is this like current roster or what? I don't know. Current roster? Uh, who's your number one contender? Is this Samoa show? <laughs> yeah, they're a bully. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Where... I'm expecting a better answer from my friend on the left because he's had time to think while he was looking at you making the face like you had to go take a poop. I do have to take a poop. Austin Aries is champ. Kenny King as number one contender. Wow. Really? <laughs> really? That's awesome. Yeah. Um, it's out there. Yeah, it is out there. Mostly because of Kenny King. Austin that, Aries? Yes. That screams in your fit. Travis, okay. who's your main heel? <laughs> Go ask him first. Abel, who's your main heel? Uh, yeah, bull- it sucks being the first one. Bully. Bully still being the main heel. Is he that good right now? Yes. I agree. Travis? Bully. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Unless heel abyss. Oh, jeez, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Heel abyss. God, I, I miss abyss. I, no, I, miss, I, was, no, 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 I miss abyss. 
I miss the bitch. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> so, so I was confused when you said you were talking about the Big Bang and everything's rebooted, reset. So I was thinking, okay, wait, is it all like the same roster? Are they the same characters? The are they same, same faces and the heels? Same roster. Or no. are we just like a fantasy, <laughs> fantasy football league type thing? No, no. All right. Okay. I was I got confused on that. So. And somehow have Kazarian in there as not the top heel, but one of the top heels without Christopher Daniels. So have Christopher Daniels there, but. You know, give Kazarian a chance to just be did, a did top I, heel. Then I change. Uh, my top face is still AJ, but my top heel is Austin. Austin Aries. Okay. Mm. I would have my top face as James Storm. <laughs> oh, sorry. You're serious? No. The character. Mm-hmm. No. Character. Really? really? He still gets his bigger reaction as AJ, and he still gets his bigger reaction as a face than, yeah. than, than a lot of guys. And that, to me, that's another example where they where they pulled the trigger too late. They gave him the title. They he missed the title shot. Wasn't that he had a his fault though? Storm yeah. um, Rude uh, missed his title shot. The next night, Storm won the belt, and then the next week they turned him heel. They mm-hmm. turned uh, Rude heel, mm-hmm. and he's been heel ever since. And he, it's Storm only had the the belt for like a month, and then that was it. He never touched the gold again. Yeah, and but- it got phased out of the storyline just as his popularity was starting to get up there with his with his beer drinking redneck gimmick. If there's anything rednecky and 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 beer drinking about TNA and their core audience, but uh, James Storm would reflect it perfectly. If yeah. they okay, let me. I said I said no at first, but if they stay in one place like Nashville or Florida or whatever, then yes. James Storm's your But man. if they're going to be traveling, no. He's, he's not the main face. But if he's if it's a local, regional area, yes, he, he will be a good face. He'll be a good face for the company. And my heel would, would be Bully Ray still because he just does it so good. That yeah. Bully Ray, would, would his character would clash with a beer-drinking redneck easily. Well, him his being character... From, him being from New York. Yeah, his character can do... Clash with anybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point of his character. All right. That was fun. That was fun. That was totally random, but that was yeah. Don't hurt. Are uh, are we done with TNA talk? Um, congrats to ODB. Yeah, we talked about ODB already. We did. We did already talk about ODB. I think that's. I I think that's it. I think that's it for our wrestling talk for this week. Uh, This weekend, we do have a couple of indie shows coming up. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, well, here, hold on. Before we get to the indie shows, what are you doing this uh, Saturday night? Oh, sweet Jesus on a stick! I am going to see Fozzy live at the House of Blues. It's gonna be awesome. Gonna go see uh, Jericho. Uh, I yeah. Go. yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, they're also Jericho's also having a meet and greet at the uh, Cactus Music Store at five o'clock on Saturday. If you buy his new CD, you get a wristband, and you get to meet him, autograph, picture, whatever. <laughs> Really? So my attempt, no promises made. If I if I can pull it off, I'm gonna try to. If they still have wristbands left, I'm gonna try to get one, and I'm gonna see if I can get a bumper for the show. Not nice. necessarily to save to save everybody's ass. It's not gonna be from Chris Jericho. It's gonna be from Mongoose McQueen. That'll work. Yeah. So we'll, I'm gonna try to get Mongoose. You said it's at five o'clock. It's five o'clock on Saturday. You can meet me there if you want to make it. Uh, the Fozzy stuff. Man, if, if you like rock music, dude, there's no excuse. The Fozzy stuff's good. It's really good. Especially the last album that came out. It's really good. They're going to be there with uh, Saxon, right? Yeah, they're opening for Saxon. Yeah. For who? Old school metal. Uh, Motorcycle man. Yeah, but uh, other than that, we're all just going for Fozzy. Yeah. Yeah, because I've been to enough shows. After the oh, first man goes, if you go outside and wait, for, wait, wait by the bus, you'll run into him, hopefully get an autograph there. The hard way, you know, but right, the record yeah. store thing is pretty easy. Sweet. Sounds so, pretty I'm cool. What record store was it? Uh, Cactus Music. It's it's uh, across the street from the 59 Diner off of uh, 59 and Shepherd. Okay. It's, in oh, that, okay. it's in that vicinity. Okay. Like where Star Pizza is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's around there. Well, I love Star Pizza. Cactus <laughs> <laughs> Of course, the fat kid likes Star Pizza. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, cool. Uh, that's going to be awesome. Hopefully you get to see uh, Jericho. Or, I mean, Mongoose. Yeah. Uh, um, so listeners if you don't uh, have any other plans if y'all want to head on out there that'd be cool too um, uh, me and Travis aren't going Travis and I are doing something else 
Uh, Texas All Star Wrestling is going to have a show down here in Laporte on Saturday night. I don't know. I'm, I might go to Cactus Music now. <laughs> oh, you're going to change plans? Huh? <laughs> He'll meet you later. Right. Yeah. Well, that's at five o'clock. The Texas All Star Wrestling doesn't start till eight o'clock. That's so, plenty of time. Yeah, you have plenty of time to make it back down here, uh, and it's uh, you know going to be a pretty pretty good show. I, I I've never been to this venue out here uh, called the <laughs> Give it a shot Wiener. <laughs> Could you act like an adult, please? Uh, I mean, okay. Uh, the Wiener Robinson Theater. It's on... Uh... <laughs> and then we laugh. It's, <laughs> See, it's, I pull it off and I'll... Yeah. It's pronounced Wine-A. Oh, not Wine-A. Wien, not Wiener, Wine-A. Wine-A. Yeah, whatever. It's Wiener. It's Wiener. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've never been to that venue. That would be pretty cool. And uh, seeing some of the uh, local indie stars here pulling off a show there for a Texas All-Star. Take that'd pictures. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, I'll take some pictures, see take if pictures. I can uh, load them up to the uh, Facebooks and Twitters and, oh yeah, Instagram, we have one of those. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. We might not get a chance to talk about this because of our birthday spectacular, but um, all of us are going to go see Mick Foley next Wednesday. Yes. And it's true. Mick Foley's going to be at the Improv uh, on the 2nd, yeah, on Wednesday. It's at 7 o'clock? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock. Cool. Yeah. Get yeah. your tickets. Foley's uh, doing his little stand-up stuff, man. That's pretty cool. I'm really excited for that. Uh, so, I mean, we're having we're having Jericho in town, and we're having Foley in town. Man, we're getting spoiled. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Not the chiefless. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty awesome. And, yeah, we're, we're all going to be there. And if anybody winds up, you know, uh, we're, we're kind of – having general admission seats here right well everybody does so we're gonna kind of meet out front and try to meet up with whoever we can meet up with and try to all get seats together whenever we you know get in there um so yeah if you're planning on going drop us a line on facebook or twitter let us know and who knows we can all sit in one big old angry mob yes we'll get kicked out together yes (laughs) it'll be fun yeah. Uh, Sunday, Texas All-Star Wrestling is also having another show. So they're having a show on Saturday and Sunday. Can you believe that? Wow, that's too much wrestling. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, Sunday, it's going to be at the Armadillo Events Center at 4 p.m. So, ta-da. All right, so next week, you mentioned this a, a little bit. You referenced it there. Um, next week, we are going to have our one-year anniversary special. Uh, October 2nd is officially our one-year so, yay. Uh, we're going to re- be recording a special episode, basically, because of that. Um, we are going to have, you know, some of our past guests on here, and we're going to basically not have, like, a regular show where we analyze WWE and TNA. Basically, what we're going to do is just sit around, chit-chat, and what we want you, the listeners, to do is to send in questions to us, open-ended uh, questions just about wrestling or you know any other things in general we'll pick some of them out and we'll answer them panel style with some of our past guests you know some of the ROW guys some of the doomsday wrestling guys uh, that type of thing and we're just gonna kind of you know sit around have fun you know talk eat shoot the shit and record it all so it's just Assu- gonna... assuming they show up assuming they... yeah <laughs> correct well uh, we'll be here at least you know so. impersonations yeah. If they don't show up, we'll do impersonations. Yeah, this is a text on star. Thank you for your you know, That's a bad uh, impersonation. Te digo, puta. Te digo. Yeah. <laughs> that's my dirty Sanchez. That's your dirty Sanchez yeah. as a person? That's you if you drink, actually. Yeah. 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 Can you do a, a, a gentleman impersonation there? Well, that was pretty good, actually. Yeah, yeah see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, got a, uh, I got a hammer impersonation. Shut up, Chris. <laughs> You're just another tool, Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Go back in the shed where you belong. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I hope that wasn't too ruthless for you. Oh, yeah, I see what you did there. Yeah. I see what you did there, yeah. 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 Uh, okay, so send in your questions, guys. Uh, get a hold of us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Houston Wrestling Radio. Leave us a message, post up on our uh, Facebook page or whatever. Uh, or if you want to get a hold of us through Twitter, uh, our Twitter handle is at H Wrestling Radio. Send us in uh, your questions, nice open-ended stuff. Uh, you know, who's who's the greatest wrestler of all time? What's the worst pay-per-view of all time? You know, just something open-ended where we can have a conversation about it. December to this member. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a very good one. You know, uh, so that type of things. And, uh, you know, keep in mind, you know, the, the company that we are going to be with. Maybe you could tailor a question to some of them. 
So there we go. Uh, that should be fun. I hope it's going to be fun. It, it, it should be uh, interesting, I think. Indeed. Indeed. One year. Oh, see. see. Yes. <laughs> can you imagine? One year. Already. No. Look at that. Yeah. It can only get worse from here. <laughs> worse? Yeah. I hope not. Okay. Uh, anything else? Or are we done? Um, I'm done. You're done? Yeah. Stick That's a fork in you? All right. something. Okay. Well... There we go. Make sure you tune in next week, guys. Tell your friends. Send us some questions. Look at our Facebook. Like us on Twitter. Text me. My number is 8328. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jeez, you're crazy. All right. Adios, my friends. Keep it classy. Toodles. So how special was that? 51. Yeah. <laughs> it was condensed. Yeah. No interview. Yeah. A lot less talking about wrestling. Yeah. I like the I like the less wrestling talk part. <laughs> is that less wrestling you, talk? Is that because you slept through SmackDown? Yeah. Just like this fool missed half a Raw. And I can't remember Impact. <laughs> I can't remember Impact. Except yeah. the end of it. Eh. We need to start taking old man memory pills. That way we can remember what actually happens on Impact. Or just write the shit down when we watch yeah. it. Yeah, we can do are that. You, or you can finish peeing first, because that's what the listeners are going to think you're doing back there, because that's peeing? what it sounds like. <laughs> kind of. Uh, you thirsty there, Tex? Jeez. Fill it all this with the damn top. <laughs> Come on, man. Act like you got water at home. <laughs> <laughs> you know how, he doesn't have a filter. Uh, <laughs> I live in Pasadena, man. Uh, dirty that, water. Pasadena tap water. Uh, that, no, sir. That crunchy water. Yeah. <laughs> you know, salty water. it's forty percent crunchy. <laughs> you know, uh, on The Simpsons, the fish with the three eyeballs. That's uh, the water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is it blinky? Blinky. Yeah. blinky. <laughs> mm. That's why I call high quality H two O. Dude, that's the second Waterboy reference tonight. Proud of myself. Did you just watch it like yesterday or something? Or? No. Let's make it a third. That looks kind of uh, hot there. Why don't you get some ice out of the cooler? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I got nothing. <laughs> I guess we can call it a night now. All right. Let's call it a night. It's a night. Because it's Friday night and I'm feeling right. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't know what you're singing. I'm off key. <laughs> I'm moving like Fandango, and nobody can tell because it's a fucking podcast. That's it. Okay. <laughs> that was wonderful. Bravo! I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, yeah, though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away! Hey, boo! Boo!